Hello all, and uh, today we're going to be taking a look at the SH figure arts from Bandai of Piccolo the Proud Namekian. Um, this is kind of their updated Piccolo. The first one they did was a uh, Piccolo that kind of had like the, the manga colors. Um, I never got that one. I saw that this one was um, going up for pre-order. Um, I never pre-ordered it. Uh, it was just as soon as it came in stock on Big Bad, uh, Big, Big Bad Toy Store. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, went ahead and picked him up. Piccolo's my favorite Dragon Ball Z character. I don't watch um, a lot of anime. I think I've only ever actually seen a couple, like, all the way through. Uh, one was Dragon Ball Z. I've seen Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. So if you want to count those as two separate ones, cool, I guess. Um, I never watched... Um, I watched some of GT... Not all the way through. Um, and I've never seen Super. I've seen parts of Super. And I just didn't like it, so I stopped watching. Um, and then Yu Yu Hakusho was the other one. And I've seen some like anime films. Like, I've seen the Fist of the North Star movie and stuff like that. But, um, yeah. Piccolo, my favorite Dragon Ball Z character. Um, I just like his arc. I like... Uh, Everything from being a villain in Dragon Ball to his growth as a hero uh, in Dragon Ball Z. And then just like his relationship with Gohan and how, you know, there's that joke that Piccolo's Gohan's real father. Like, it's just funny. And I like it. I genuinely do. I think he's one of the better overall stories in Dragon Ball Z. Um, so pick this up. Um, it is a Bandai. It is a figure art. So he's going to be smaller in scale to a lot of other figures. Um I don't have a lot of Bandai's. I have a few common Rider Bandai's, and that's about it. Um, uh, they're you know sometimes they can get really pricey, especially if they're not in production anymore. So a lot of the ones I've always wanted in the past, I've never been able to really get. Um, uh, there's like a lot of the Godzilla ones I always wanted. I just never was able to get either. Uh, the monster arts or whatever they are, um, but. Was able to snag the Piccolo on Big Bad Toy Store, so happy about that. And yeah, so here we go. There he is in the box. We got the side here. I like this face. It's like an early kind of, like, fighting surprised Piccolo. Um, and that one actually looks really good. We got the back here. Yeah, cool. Let's get this guy open. <clears throat> this kind of has a bit of a, and, and maybe I'm a little off on it, but it kind of looks like it's a little bit of a mashup of Piccolo. Um, and I'll try to explain that a little bit better as I open it. There we go. Uh, we got some instructions there, just a regular green backdrop there. Uh, so this is just telling you how to like kind of remove stuff. Um, yeah, like uh, two of the heads that can have the hat, they just pop off. It goes on. Um, then, you know, the head comes off. There's a, It's on a ball joint there. The crossed arms is all one piece, as it shows right here. So there you go on that. Uh, then they come off. You put on this little... Um, I then just snap on the other arms. This one right here is like his arm when it tears off all the time. Uh, and different hands. So it's just a little instruction thing. I haven't had a lot of Bandai's, but the Common Rider's going to have similar stuff, so I'm pretty sure it works like a lot of the same way. Uh, first thing out of the box right here is the cape. I like this, that the cape is actually multiple parts, so you can pose it, open it up and pose it a little bit more. This side's a little bit more tight than this one. Um, but yeah, that's pretty cool. I actually like that. Um, yeah, that's a pretty cool little effect. And I, to be honest, I'll probably pose this guy more often in the cloak, in his cape, and uh, in his hat. Um, I just think he looks way more badass and cool that way. That else come out? There we go. Yeah, I just think he looks way more cool with the um, cape and the cloak and the uh, like the shoulder pads and the hat. Like that just that's kind of like 
a definitive piccolo look um so yeah these are all just gonna pop out aren't they okay let's try to be careful about this we'll start with his hands trying to get everything not to just randomly fall out here because they're not packed too tightly in there so we got the special beam cannon hand and no i can't pronounce the japanese name so please don't ask me to um there we go Uh, we have just like an open kind of blast hand. I like that they gave him like the long nails too. Um, kind of got the open striking hand. Kind of his like fighting pose hand, I guess you could say. Same thing for the other side. Same one. And then we got another kind of blasting hand. Open hand. Open hand slash blasting hand uh and i guess these ones are removable as well aren't they so we can count these two his regular arms the non-crossed arms come with the closed fists i love the detail they got like the his little like pink and red muscly parts they look great and they got like all the lines in his skin like the detail it's really good here is the torn arm, which is like, so like they colored this part black to kind of, I guess, mask like the bloodiness of it, but it does have like the purple blood coming out the side. So when he's, when he's got it and he's posing, you'll see that. But they kind of took out like the weird meaty fleshy part there. Uh, we have this, which uh, changes when you take off the uh, um, the cape and everything. Uh, like, if you want him just to not have the cape and the shoulders, this goes into... I'm pretty sure this is the piece that goes into the back clips on. Because um, the cape clips on in the, uh, the back as well, I believe. Um, we'll take a look at that in a minute. Uh, we got these pieces. I'll be honest with you, I'm not too sure what these are. What are these for? I'm looking at the little instructions here. Oh, these go on the back for the cape as well. Okay. This is for like the... Um, like if you want to mount them, like for the display stand. But he didn't come with a display stand, did he? I'm guessing he's, he doesn't. Like you got to buy one of those display stands... <coughs> apologize Sep uh, separately uh, that's all right we got the alternate heads we got this one and this is what i meant by like it feels like a bit of a mashup of piccolos because this to me kind of looks like an earlier version of piccolo like from dragon ball or early dragon ball z when he's like younger almost like when he's ma jr in dragon ball um, I could be wrong on that, but that's what it kind of reminds me of. But then you have, like, Screaming Head Piccolo. Kind of looks like it's from the same time. He's got, like, all the little veins on his head. We kind of have that shocked, paranoid eye Piccolo. And then, like, here with this one, it's a screaming head. But, like, if this one is kind of, like, earlier Piccolo, I feel like this one is more like going into, like, the, the Android and Cell Saga Piccolo. Like, after he fuses with Kami. Um, and I think that's going to be the same way, now that we've got that out, on the head that he comes with equipped. Oh, he stands really good. Like that. Like, I feel like this is like younger kind of Piccolo. And this is like post-fusion with Kami Piccolo. Uh, maybe I'm just seeing it differently. But that's the way it kind of looks to me. Is like, you can kind of have a different era of Piccolo if you wanted with the head sculpts. Um, because these do kind of just look different. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Um, but yeah. Uh, so, the crossed arms is all one solid piece. Uh, I think I mentioned that earlier. 
he's a bandai so you know exactly what kind of um articulation you're gonna get out of this guy let's see if we can get the um cape on here so yeah there's the thing in the back and then the cape goes on just slides in right underneath and there you go and like I said it, it does have that like open up effect if you want it wider awesome like, to be totally honest, I'm probably just going to post him like this most of the time. We'll get into some other stuff here in a minute to kind of go over a lot of that. Uh, but yeah, that is it. Um, the cape does have a little bit of movement to it. Um, if you're familiar with any SA, uh, Bandai figure arts, then you know the posability on these guys is insane. Um, the cape does make him a little bit back heavy, so you kind of got to lean him forward just a little bit. Um, not too bad, just ever so slightly. It's not a big difference. Um, so yeah. Um, but there you go. Like, yeah, we're, we're going to get into some of this articulation. Okay. And then if you want to take that off the cape, you just kind of straighten it out, which also the cape is on a joint as well. So you can move it. So that comes right out. Head comes right off. It's easy. There you go. That's one thing I like about Bandai's. My common riders were the same way, so I knew this was going to be good when I got it because um, my common riders were so easily interchangeable as well. Um, one thing to note is that if you have the crossed arms on, there is a little bit of a gap here. That's so that the cloak can kind of sit in. The cloak kind of um, goes in and sits in, like right there, kind of covers up a lot of that gap. Um, so that's why that's there. Because the, the crossed arms are kind of molded into like a bit of the cape there. Um, it's not too big of an issue. It's just something you might have to kind of think about. Um, but yeah, there's that. But yeah, as I was saying, uh, my common riders have a lot of interchangeable parts. Um, so some of them, uh, did not, I will admit, did not come with those band eyes. Um, but same thing. There's like so much articulation and everything. So if you have one kind of band eye, you're going to know. Uh, back here, this is if you want to cover that up and not use the cape. This goes right in. There you go. Yeah. And then let's see if we can get these. Oh, there goes the head. I was trying to get the arms off. Those were a little bit tight. Um, but there you go. It's one solid piece. Uh, as I try to crawl under the table here. And grab the head. There we go. Yeah, those were tight on there. So, uh, which is good. I mean, you don't want them just falling off. Yep, so there we go, there's that. And then we can just pop on his regular arms. These are a little look like they're a little bit easier to get on and off than the crossed arms. I think it's probably just because those crossed arms are like one piece. And then you just kind of give them that classic, like, <laughs> Dragon Ball Z pose. Let's see, we'll change the head on this one. There we go. Yeah, so I like it. Um, 
arms and everything, they're pretty easy to get on. Um, there is a little bit of a um, gap here. It's not noticeable, but like where the arm goes in, there's a little bit of a gap there. It's not bad or anything. I just noticed it. Um, there you go. Obviously, articulation on these guys. He's got shoulder joints. They come out a lot. So there you go. Uh, if you've owned any kind of Bandai, then you really know. So, full, like, ab crunch articulation. He moves every which way. He's going out. Let's see if we get the balance on these guys. I uh, might have to work on that a little bit, but yes, the feet swivel every which way. They got those double jointed knees. They go all the way back. And he's got the toes. Yeah, I mean, Bandai's are just. I, I, I will say this too. This is kind of fascinating. Um, my and it might just be because of the brand and the, what's in the figures and everything. My um. My common rider band eyes, um, oh, so just like swivel that in and then it covers up that gap. Okay, cool. All right. I take back what I said about the gap in the arm that just went away. Uh, you just like push this in a little bit more and kind of twist it. That goes right away. Cool. Um, let's see if I can kind of get them into like a more. There we go. Um, so my common riders, and it might just be because they're they're I think they're even smaller than this piccolo. Um, they're really light. And I got some friends who have some band eyes, and they'll tell me the same thing. They're like they're really light figures. Um, like there's not a lot of weight to them. This piccolo is kind of hefty. I think most of it's in the legs, but like he is he's kinda he's heavier than a lot of other band eyes I've ever held. Um so I like that. I actually like that. One of the thing that's one of the things that's always kind of put me off on Bandai's is that they are so light. It almost feels like you're just going to break it. And I know that that's not often the case. They're very well made figures, and they don't. At least I don't think they break often. I don't have enough of them to kind of tell you that. But um, this guy feels very weighty, very solid. Like it doesn't feel like the other Bandai's. Um, he does a little bit up in the torso, but his legs are very heavy. Um, so it gives it a lot of, I think, much needed weight to it. Um, we can try to see if we can change out some of the, uh, oh, don't fall over on me now. So, let's see if we can get that off. Okay, you kind of got to like wiggle this out. There we go. So, take the head off. You can put it on, like, this head if you want. I'll probably, honestly, leave it on the kind of just stoic head. Just kind of his blank face. Since I, I kind of like this head sculpt the most anyways. Um, even though I do like the funny, like, old, like, shocked face Piccolo. Um... The yelling one's pretty cool, too. I like that they actually gave him the purple tongue. Um, so, yeah. That's kind of what we got with the Piccolo. I know I'm not going through, like, all the crazy articulation you're going to get in the Bandai, but, like, you already kind of understand what you're going to get with one of these. It's it's pretty pretty damn cool. Um, uh, yeah, so thank you. I'm going to probably put the um, cape and everything back on him and display him that way, and that'll be what I do. But uh, thank you. Hope you enjoyed it. My first Bandai unboxing, so yeah, check you guys on the next one.